Welcome, everyone. Uh, I suppose I should briefly introduce myself uh, to those who don't know me. My name's Jean. Uh, I've been into this whole topic of what lies beyond through altered states of consciousness for over 11 years now. Uh, it's been a tremendous journey of discovery, effort, and discipline. You know, discipline meaning uh, it, this comes from the word disciple, right? I think we get confused when we say uh, we have to make a discipline. Uh, a disciple means to learn and you know, not discipline like making an effort and suffering and, and not learning, right? One can work very hard and learn nothing. <laughs> so we have to pay attention and always be curious and ask questions, right? You know, most of us don't really know how to make a real effort. We're, you know, kind of lazy and want everything to be served to us on a nice and convenient platter, and we're taught to do this, whether it's from parents or schools or books, uh, internet, um, science, religion, and various spir uh, spiritual teachings as well. Uh, we always want to consume outer things. And it's the same with knowledge too. Most of our knowledge derives from outside of us instead of within. Uh, true spiritual wisdom is the arising of being willing to be empty of everything that we know, right? The known. And, you know, life and all of external reality is the known. And we can't begin to see the unknown uh, and see beyond the known until we empty ourselves of all our conditioning, beliefs, and gathered knowledge over the years uh, and over the course of our life. So empty your cup, so to speak, to use a Zen Buddhist saying. And, you know, we don't only want to uh, rely on, you know, wanting information and, and knowledge to be served to us like uh, privilege, but we also want it to be in line with our beliefs, preconceptions and desires and so on. So we also have this issue of, you know, our kind of uh, personal egoic uh, tainting of our perception. So this is a little bit of what I want to go into in this event as well, about going beyond all these challenges in our perception to really get to the truth or core behind, uh, you know, the essence of astral projection. Uh, and, you know, astral projection just being one aspect and phenomena that arises along this journey of discovery or self-discovery. You know, uh, how does a person who is a master of the violin or piano become great at what they do? They make some little efforts here and there, right? Do they expect themselves to be great with a few nights of practice? You know, absolutely not. And like I said, most of us don't know how to push ourselves just a little bit more in order to uh, achieve the proper results. Uh, and I think from what I said, I think uh, I made a sort of diagram recently. Let me find it. Uh, and so, yes, as you can see, you know, astral projection has nothing to do with uh, hallucinations, visualizations, thoughts, beliefs. Uh, the experience is just as tangible as your sense experience here and now as you listen to me speak. With all of your usual sense of self and full senses intact, right? It's an experience, you know, where sounds, sight, touch, emotion, and the way that you perceive them and feel them uh, in your normal sense of self, uh, you know, it's just the same way as when you're uh, awake here in the physical. Uh, it's not, astral projection is not about sitting there thinking about it or seeing it in your mind's eyes. Uh, no, you know, astral projection isn't something that we can comprehend by imagination, uh, but only by direct experience. So, 
Yes, just uh, getting back onto my kind of background briefly, I, I practiced this whole, you could call it dilemma of the soul, you could say, uh, for about uh, 10 years until I did any of this kind of public work. Uh, I started helping people almost uh, a year ago now when I found the Astral Projection subreddit, which is why most of you are here, uh, which was, you know, the subreddit was an absolutely uh, atrocious mess. <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend it to most people if they're just coming into the uh uh, interest of, of astral projection for the first time. It is a mess of fears, delusions, uh, fantasies, confusions, false, you know, people not really having actual experiences, but just, just idiocies of in their mind, right? Um, and it still mostly is like that, to be honest. Uh, there's only so much uh, moderators and people like me can do uh, it, you know, and, and I, and I knew when I found it, uh, it, that if I weren't so experienced myself, that I'd most likely fall into the trap of, of fearful thoughts of other people on there as well. Uh, but luckily I've developed my own sort of center of gravity, so to speak, and I decided to help. And through these efforts of helping people, this has eventually uh, evolved into what you now see as my book and also my YouTube channel. So that's a very brief introduction about myself. Uh, I have much more um, to say, you know, about myself and my life and my kind of upbringing as a child in my book, if you're interested as well. And of course, there are experiences and various things that I talk about on my uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, and you know, one of the greatest things I've learned over the 10 years of struggling within myself is that once I started uh, being of, you know, like genuine service to others, uh, my experience started, my experiences started to take a new depth of its own. And there's this sort of natural progression towards helping others rather than, you know, sort of being so self-involved all the time. And so, you know, I've been there through the initial struggles that a lot of people go through uh, in, you know, meditation and astral projection, like, you know, I'm so depressed, I'm not motivated, uh, I don't understand what's going on, uh, how am I supposed to continue living my life after waking up spiritually? Uh, what about my friends and family? What will they think of me? Uh, can I still eat these th uh, foods? Uh, can I still drink alcohol and take drugs? Uh, why am I not having experiences for weeks on end? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, why am I having all these disturbing dreams or nightmares? You know, why am I so angry? Why can't I just do this or that anymore, etc. Right? Um, we we all have these challenges. And all these answers to these problems can be found within ourselves uh, through self-inquiry, awareness, and meditation. You know, the, the problem, whatever problem it is, is never separate from the answer. And so we have to ask ourselves many questions on this path of our life, right? Because the, this isn't just a path of astral projection, it's a path of life and self-discovery, right? This is one mistake that I think a lot of people make. They see astral projection as this sort of separate hobby. And they say, uh, I won't focus on astral projection anymore. It's too difficult uh, at the moment uh, because, you know, I have, I have other hobbies to attend to. Uh, this is ultimately, you know, an illusion because the astral plane is always at the background of our experience, no matter how busy we are with other activities or hobbies. Uh, you know, as you, as some of you know, I, I'm a very uh, busy person. Uh, even right now, I'm going through some intense teacher training. Uh, I've got to get back to that uh, later on today. I'm here doing this event. I've, I'm writing uh, two more books at the moment. 
Um, I, you know, have my YouTube. I, I do some uh, freelance work, uh, graphics design work. I'm always answering questions on Discord and Reddit and YouTube. Uh, you know, on top of that, I have my meditation practice. I usually meditate uh, twice a day for at least 30 minutes at a time. I get up in the middle of the night and uh, to practice too and go back to sleep and recall my experiences. Uh, so, you know, I, I do a lot as well. Um, I, I don't think, you know, for, for someone who is really determined on this sort of uh, path, I don't think, you know, being busy is is much of an excuse really. It, it's It's just more, we need to realize that we just need to adjust our awareness and our approach towards uh, our relationship with our external life and our spiritual life. So, and you know, I wouldn't have my busy life and schedule any other way. I, I love being busy. Uh, you know, when we disintegrate everything that no longer serves us within, such as sitting around for hours on our phones, uh, scrolling through social media, doing who knows what, uh, overthinking, or just being generally depressed, then, you know, by getting rid of all that, we allow more space for uh, creativity in our lives. And being highly productive and practical is not possible without a sort of uh, deep and abiding peace and space and, and love for your life, right, in the background. And imagine, you know, imagine you were dead now and reviewed your life. What would you do different? You'd certainly stop complaining and self-indulging uh, in feeling sorry for yourself. And you'd become more active instead of being stagnant and inactive. Because you'd have more energy freed up to do what you really want to do. Instead of telling yourself, you'll do all these things in the future. You know, future just being a figment of our imagination. <clears throat> and therefore, these things never actually get done because we get into the habit of saying we will do it in the future. Uh, when the future arrives, we're still saying we'll do it in the future. And it's this endless projection of our dreams never being manifested here and now in the present moment. And so how do we make those dreams into realities? Well, we stop dreaming. Uh, and so this brings me on to a few common questions I want to get out of the way before we just begin the Q&A, uh, because as you know, I, I answer the same questions a lot and it would be <laughs> nice if uh, today we got a bit deeper into questions that really make us think about ourselves and spark a kind of active kind of thinking, right? An active kind of thinking means to never come to intellectual conclusions in our answers, right? Uh, but to develop ourselves into contemplative and deeply mindful people. Uh, this kind of objective, non-judgmental and silent type of thinking or awareness uh, is a much deeper kind of intelligence. And it's a faculty we aren't usually taught uh, how to do in our kind of conformative society. And so the best questions are the ones that make us say, I don't know. And if you can be comfortable in saying, I don't know, rather than uh, desperately intellectually looking for an answer, then that's the beginning of real insight. But I'm not talking about questions like, hey, Gene, do you know whether this uh, species of aliens exist? Uh, you know, obviously, I don't know. But I mean questions related to our direct consciousness and psychology and the personal challenges that we all have. So one common question uh, is about meditation, uh, what it is and how to meditate. And something I want to clarify is that at first, meditation may seem like it's just about be, uh, feeling relaxed and getting away from the stress of life. But actually, uh, the deeper purpose behind it is the awakening of consciousness. In other words, to awaken out of our own unconscious 
psychological patterns and behaviors which keep us in suffering and unconsciousness in the first place. And in order for this to happen, uh, we have to develop a sort of center of gravity, uh, a pure and objective awareness, which is a kind of active self-inquiry. Uh, this self-inquiry uh, is something that always seeks to understand ourselves, which leads to self-knowledge and, and self-awareness, you know, which is called uh, temet noske, right? Which means uh, know thyself in Latin. It is to always actively learn about oneself and reality, uh, you know, uh, knowledge of yourself is not separate from reality because you know, reality is ultimately within yourself. Uh, so this this activeness is important because when we have problems, uh, our kind of intellectual mind comes in and gives us an answer, uh, and that answer we react to, and we we create this sort of conflict within ourselves, this duality, and and. Uh, the solution to our problems is not found in answers and conclusions, but living actively and mindfully. So this is the great path of self-realization. And the best thing of all is that, in a way, it doesn't take any egoic method or effort at all. Uh, and all it takes is honest and direct awareness. Uh, yoga and also so the word yoga and also the word religion uh, originally translate to union, which is union of yourself and the soul or consciousness, uh, meaning that, you know, you are your soul, uh, the soul and challenges or egos which you perceive are not separate. They are you. And in this realization, we can, you know, we can uh, transmute those unconscious aspects into consciousness. If we, you know, still have particular egos, then it's because we don't truly know that part of ourselves yet. Uh, we can't truly be aware of what we don't understand. Uh, another common question, of course, uh, the infamous one uh, throughout all of astral projection communities, uh, you know, what's the difference between lucid dreaming and astral projection? So lucid dreaming is about attaining a level of lucidity. That is uh, lucidity of the senses in a non-physical subjective environment. Okay. Now, astral projection is about going the next step, which is about attaining a deeper level of consciousness and awareness inside non-physical environments. So that means transcending the dream state altogether. Lucid dreaming teaches us to become aware of the dream. Astral projection teaches us to become aware of why and how the dream exists. And then it's through this understanding that we can go beyond it. Of course, the why and how dreams exist is simply because of our psychology and unconscious, mechanical behaviors, habits, and conditioning, which is why I said earlier, uh, it's important to know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you're not going to understand why your dreams exist in the form of thought forms during the day and in the form of dreams at night. Those two things are not separate, right? Your, your dreams during the day are no different than uh, the, the dreams you have at night. So the reason why, you know, people who solely believe uh, only lucid dreaming has uh, validity in a sort of materialistic scientific perspective, because, uh, you know, I've been dealing with people like that on the subreddit coming from the lucid dreaming subreddit, and uh, they're coming to the astral projection reddit saying, you know, this is all nonsense, and you guys just need to focus on lucid dreaming and uh, that astral projection is just lucid dreaming. <laughs> uh, for them, lucid dreaming is a purely psychological phenomenon and they don't understand that astral projection is a spiritual experience. It is a awakening of consciousness. And of course, uh, you know, 
they can't see beyond the realities that they don't understand. None of us can. So that's just the level that you're at. You can, you know, stay at a level of lucid dreaming and not understand that uh, there's there's more to that ghost-like uh, substance of, of dreams. Uh, in one sense, lucid dreaming is the opposite of astral projection because in order to astral project, you need to stop dreaming. And the deeper truth is that most of us don't stop dreaming, even when we're in physical waking life. So anyone can dream, but it takes a special state of awareness to go beyond it. Moving our awareness into deeper levels of consciousness is not something most of us are used to, and it's definitely a challenge to understand at first, but it's a very rewarding challenge if one persists and remains open-minded. Uh, another common question is about whether astral projection is dangerous. Um, as with anything in life uh, and in our devolved human minds, uh, there's always duality in what we see, right? And so with this question on whether it's dangerous, uh, on one side of the coin, yes, perhaps there's some psychological danger, uh, but on the other side, it's absolutely stupidity to think there's any danger at all. Why? Because the danger is just in our own minds. So sure, there are kind of negative entities. Um, however, there's always a reason why we encounter them or go to lower dimensions. And that reason is to be found within ourselves. So we need to be a bit more intelligent. Uh, we need to change our perspective of quote unquote, you know, said negative entities uh, from a perspective of purely fearful stupidity, right? To a perspective of intelligent comprehension of these entities and just see them for what they are, which are often just kind of pathetic and weak energetic forms which uh, thrive off your own weak and pathetic emotions of self-indulgent, uh, self-indulging fear, right? <laughs> um, you know, you can either see it like this in, in this harsh way that I'm describing or also approach it from a state of uh, loving kindness and understanding that lower beings are just trapped and you can sort of... Uh, feel sorry for them. So there's no, there is really never any reason uh, to feel fear. And our fears really derive from our dualistic perspective of good and bad, right? And we need understanding of why people think there is and isn't danger. Uh, we attract what we need to learn, I believe. And if you haven't overcome fear yet, uh, then that's your challenge at this stage of your particular soul's path, right? Uh, I personally no longer really feel fear when I encounter these types uh, of experiences because, as I've said, my perspective is is different now. Uh, therefore, I don't have that many experiences. And, you know, as above, so below, if you're a, a negative and fearful type of person, you're more likely to uh, have those types of experiences and e definitely more likely to react to them in a negative way. Hence, that is the danger, right? Our In our own reactions towards experiences. If, if someone is just really not ready for astral projection and they have an experience they just don't understand, but they see something really scary and they have some kind of trauma from it and they keep having nightmares from it, then I'm sorry, but you know, it's not the astral projection experience that was dangerous. It's the person and they, they shouldn't, they just shouldn't uh, react in that way. And you know, if you're thinking to yourself now, oh my God, uh, I'm really negative and always fearful and pessimistic. So therefore, I'm definitely going to have negative experiences like Jean said. <laughs> um, then, well, 
you know, you really need to start developing self-awareness uh, and stop identifying with these types of self-indulging thoughts. Uh, just see it for what it is. They are just thought forms. They are not you. You don't need to follow that train of thought. Uh, you can stop thinking in that way simply by stopping giving your energy to it, your attention to it, right? That's it. Of course, it might not be difficult at first, uh, but it takes practice and you can eventually create some distance and some space between you and these uh, foreign thought forms, right? Because fear and these foreign thought forms uh, do not derive from within. They derive from the world, your conditioning, what you've grown up in society with watching scary movies things you've read on reddit um and they are illogical they are uh you know ultimately illusions uh fantasies because you don't know that uh that fear is is rational right uh, and the last common question uh, i want to clarify is about the general struggle of people not being able to separate uh, or that they experience some sort of quote-unquote vibrations or sensations during meditation and thinking that they can separate or something. And then you get the endless uh, thousands of posts on Reddit saying, I think I'm close, I felt the vibrations, uh, but I can't get there. <laughs> some people uh, stay stuck in this uh, level for, for many months. Um, I'm kind of tired of this question because it just shows that the person has not understood that astral projection can happen naturally and spontaneously. Uh, he or she is focusing too much on thinking that astral projection is just another method, uh, like a kind of methodical and mechanical activity like but uh, booting up a uh, computer, and that it has specific steps and sequences. It, it's not, it's more, um, it's more of a natural phenomenon that we just have to get in touch with. We don't need to think about the steps. We don't need to have vibrations in order to astral project. If they happen, they happen. If not, that's fine. But we don't need to give our attention uh, to analyzing uh, these sort of sensations on the way, right? In in when you're in meditation, uh, you don't focus. You know the the aim is to be impartial towards the sensations of thought, and so you should also be impartial towards sensations in the body or vibrations or anything like that. So, with all that said, there is a particular mechanic that you need to be mindful of, and which answers almost all types of these questions. And it's this. So, you know, you need to relax and you need to go to sleep in order, in order to leave the body. Uh, now, yes, one can astral project during meditation, but if you look deeply into prolonged and deep meditation, you'll also understand that meditation is a form of conscious sleep uh, in the sense that we go deeper into our subconscious world in a very like relaxed way in meditation. You see, the reason why we're uh, losing awareness as we fall to sleep is because most of us don't like to face ourselves and our subconscious, and we lose vision of what happens uh, as we sleep. And we don't understand how to consciously go to sleep. And so regardless of ordinary sleep or meditative sleep, uh, you do need to just pass the gate of sleep in order to separate from the physical body. Uh, if you ever feel that you can't separate, then you're simply not close enough to the stage of sleep and deep relaxation. Uh, your physical body needs to rest. Remember, once you're out of your body, you will be 100% unconscious of your physical body. Your awareness completely transfers to your astral body. And so 
all the people laying in bed for hours saying nothing is happening uh, are just ultimately playing games in their minds instead of just relaxing and actually going to sleep. So the key is in being instead of doing. Uh, the key is in intention and willing yourself to project during or at any time during the phase or gate of sleep. Uh, you know, forget the word sleep, right? Because we assume we know what sleep is, but we don't. We, you know, what we call sleep, this strange thing where we lay in bed like a dead corpse, uh, which adds up to many years of our life, uh, is a phenomenon where our consciousness moves into the subconscious aspect of ourselves. And during this time, it unconsciously journeys into our world of dreams, or it can also unconsciously uh, travel into objective astral worlds too. Uh, I believe that it can also do bo uh, both at the same time. Uh, this is due to our fragmentation and multidimensionality of our, our consciousness. On one level, we can be in a dream world, uh, and on another, we can also be in the astral world. And this is due to our sort of uh, fragmentation of consciousness. So because we don't pay attention to our experience during our waking lives, uh, we also don't pay attention to our sleeping lives too. As above, so below. Uh, if you're not paying attention to your experience here and now in the physical, how can you pay attention during your sleep too? You know, if you don't have the energy to the energy and the space to uh, be present during your waking life, uh, it's, it's going to be more challenging to do it in your sleep as well. So we have to be awake and aware to where we are at all times from moment to moment. And you'll naturally realize where you are when you go to sleep too, if you do this, or at least have more chance of doing so. Uh, you know, we have divided sleeping and waking as if our consciousness knows the difference between the two, uh, but it doesn't. So what we call going to sleep is just a continuation of our daily stream of thoughts, problems, worries, and so on. You know, all of what we are and this whole movement of our consciousness and what we feel that we are, right? It just, it just continues in our sleep. Uh, the only difference uh, is that during sleep, uh, our experience is translated into the form of uh, symbols of dreams. Uh, but, you know, we can go beyond all this chaos of the mind by simply observing it, observing the insanity and uh, disorder of the human mind. And through deep observation, we can come to the realization we no longer actually have problems and issues, but, uh, you know, instead, through this realization, uh, the mind becomes fresh and clear and harmonious, right? Through observing our, uh, our problems and, and all our issues, our disorder. And this harmonious state of mind or clarity is not another form you can hold on to, uh, but it is the absence of form. So we don't get there, we don't get through enlightened states by imagining uh, an idea of an enlightened state and going on to that, uh, holding on to that. Uh, it's, it's more transcendental like, uh, than that in direct experience. And lastly, uh, you know, as for science, Yes, there are many studies on uh, proving the experience as well as uh, impressive studies in quantum physics and so on. Uh, I used to enjoy reading all about modern scientific experiments a lot, and it's essential, right, for humanity to progress, uh, learning on a collective scale. Uh, however, personally, now, uh, really, you know, I realize that we need to go beyond this compulsive need to look to modern science or any authority, in fact. Uh, so 
such as religion or any spiritual system uh, as an authority, right? Which tell us that they know the truth. Uh, and our minds look to these groups of people to verify uh, knowledge or information. Um, but instead, you know, as I've said before, we need to become our own pioneers of consciousness. Because even if science proved this or that, well, it, it doesn't really prove it to you directly, does it? Uh, it answers absolutely nothing for your own individual uh, direct experience. Uh, you'll still be, you know, lost and confused as ever before until you discover the reality of it for yourself directly and develop your own inner understanding instead of reading some article or some other intellectual, uh, you know, jibber-jabber or nonsense like that, right? So, um, yes. Uh, well, I hope that lays some foundation of a bit of understanding and hopefully encourages some questions. Uh, feel free to ask absolutely any type of question. Uh, I know that was... You know, I know maybe some points that I just said were maybe uh, intense or kind of fiery in my approach, uh, but this type of directness uh, and sort of uh, warrior-like attitude uh, can easily cut through layers of conditioning and fears that help us to feel more invigorated willpower in order to in intend and send energy and force towards our our awareness during the night and also while we're awake too, you know, to be present and learn about our own particular psychological dream world that we all inhabit in our own uh, space of consciousness. And once we go beyond our own dream world, uh, then we connect to the deeper world, which we all share in a greater reality or a deeper aspect of reality. So, uh, yes, Jordan, um, yeah, feel free to, I will go through every question in the live uh, event chat uh, text channel. Uh, but, you know, if you want to ask a question in voice, uh, please feel free to do so, or, or else I will get tired of uh, reading all the questions. So, yeah, it'd be nice if some of you... Uh, unmute your mic and just ask me a question whenever really. And then uh, I'll also, when I can, uh, get through uh, some of the questions on, on the live event uh, text chat channel. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm assuming yeah. I should ask a question now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So death sounds pretty scary. Um, it'd be great to know that there is truly a place like you can go to or, you know, that death isn't the end of everything. Um, uh, would learning astral projection for the sake of that or yearning to find out, would that get in the way of you making progress towards astral projection or not really? Just um, finding out if there's more to life, you know. So, of death and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you mean uh, approaching astral projection with the intention of finding out uh, if there's more after death, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, I mean that's a, a great reason, right? Yeah, as I, uh, you know, as, as I said, uh, self inquiry is important, and we should always ask questions, whatever it is. Uh, the problem is when we. Uh, look to uh, online articles and books for our answers and, and use that as a sort of uh, false answer or sort of dogma. Um, <clears throat> but yes, and uh, whether or so it's absolutely fine. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful reason, in, in my opinion, to uh, take on this journey of discovery. And whether or not you have that intention, it's usually natural when the person is quite advanced uh, to discover it anyway. And uh, as I said on one of my uh, videos, one of my first experiences was going into an afterlife uh, astral plane where I understood that everyone I saw there was inhabiting this uh, dimension or level of reality in their consciousness as, uh, as, 
as conscious aware, a consciously aware beings who had passed away. So yeah, it's, it was a wonderful reason. Um, and you know, as you said, uh, it's a nice thing to uh, think that there is some uh, something after death, but you need to go into that because we we need to transcend why we want that we want something to to exist after astral projection right be mindful of the belief uh, a lot of people in this community uh, interested in astral projection blindly just believe that astral projection is real right i'm not saying that astral projection isn't real but a lot of people believe that astral or want to believe that astral projection is real because they're scared of death and and that and they want some comfort so we have to self inquire into why do i want that comfort what am i scared of right and and then the the journey takes a, a little more depth um and death really is a death of the known right our minds cling to everything we've learned uh, everything we know all our relationships all our attachments all our desires or uh, maybe our our wonderful mind that we've uh, developed over our life that we all this uh, this um, collected knowledge and things like that our our jobs and money and possessions the fear usually derives from uh, death of all that, death of our psychological uh, space. So we also need to work on transcending uh, that death and to go to really transcend that, uh, you know, there's a much deeper hidden message here is that we can practice dying before we die. Uh, the death of the physical body is just, it's ultimately an illusion and really you know of course it, it is is a, it is a death and a big one too you know um and of course that that is surely going to be a great journey and i can't comment on what that's going to be like i would never even dare to but what we can do now here here and now is die to all the things that we can recognize as illusory and not practical for our uh, sort of spiritual knowledge, uh, you know, things like just false, you know, belief systems, um, things that aren't, you know, necessarily real. And we, we die to that and we die to our past. We die to, uh, the dramas that we're still playing around in our heads. Uh, like maybe we got bullied in school or something. Um, and we're still identified with that 50 years later, uh, and we, we still dream about that. So as I said, we're kind of stuck in our own dream world, uh, and attachments and, and yeah, we, and we're scared to lose that and we want comfort and astral projection seems like a nice comfort. So at first, yes, most people take that approach of, uh, wanting comfort in astral projection, but eventually you need to transcend that as well. If you want to find out that the reality of that. So I hope that, uh, that helps. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Jojo, uh, Gene, have you got a good mantra for spiritual evolution and for AP? Uh, Jürgen Sway talks about mantras that can help him catapult into higher realms when he meditates and also when he's already out of body. Uh, know any mantras like that? Uh, yes, uh, I know many mantras. Um, I was taught many when I was part of a uh, Gnostic group for some years. Um, and yes, they can help, definitely. Um, when our minds are in a sort of state that is beyond uh, the intellect and it is, uh, res uh, what's the word, receptible to uh, other energies and being open, um, these kind of vibrations can help help the body and our energetic centers sort of uh, vibrate more, um, and it can definitely help us get in touch with with deeper aspects of ourselves. Um, 
And, you know, Jürgen talked about that he uh, catapults into higher realms. Um, I'm sure maybe you've already heard, uh, you know, I had a, I gave an example of that. Uh, it's happened to me various times as well. And I've simply used the mantra OM, right? A very popular one or well-known one. And uh, when I do this in the astral, I usually float upwards and uh, leave the environment that I was just in and I go into a higher environment. So OM is a very good one, I think. Uh, if you want another, uh, let me know that there's a lot for specific, there's a lot for specific uh, purposes, but I think OM is, is a very good one to use. Um, and I would just definitely look for more if you want, really. Yeah. Okay, let's see the next one. Uh, Astral Planes, Gene, how can the law of karma and law of attraction coexist? My argument is if the law of attraction exists and life can be made as we wish by thinking positively, then there would be no existence of the law of karma. Uh, according to the law of karma, you reap what you sow. If you do bad, then bad things will happen. And if you do good things, good things will happen. So the question is, if a person committed bad karma, the law of attraction still helps him in attracting good things and events depending on the, the person's way of thinking. Can you please go in depth about these laws? <laughs> okay, very good question. And you know, I can't really give you uh, a complete answer, but, you know, a law of karma and law of attraction, uh, you know, you, you see it as uh, something completely separate. I, I don't see, I actually don't see any difference between them. Um, law, law of attraction or this, this uh, phenomena of attracting things through our uh, intention and energy uh, is the same as law of karma, right? Karma being cause and effect. And, you know, uh, don't think too simply about your life, right? Things aren't just uh, good and bad, but they are a mixture of, of good and bad. And things that you think you're, you're attracting in your life that are good could also be bad in someone else's perspective. And, you know, there are, you know, there is virtue in wicked people and there's also a uh, wickedness in in virtue virtuous people right we are the human being is a mixture of good and bad things uh, uh, this is sort of duality right um actually in in deeper perspectives related to uh the planes of existence uh, so you have the astral plane, you have the mental plane, uh, and then you also have the causal plane, right? And this is where, this is what sort of, um, this is meant to be related to uh, karma, right? Cause and effect, the causal plane. So it's more just about the energy that you you are and what you ask for and what you, you do, uh, which attracts the experience that you have. Uh, we really need to go beyond the labels of good and bad in order to just see reality for, for what it is. And whatever experience you have, whether good or bad or anywhere in between, um, is your karma, is your challenge. Uh, and what you see and what you understand is your karma, right? Your level of understanding now is your karma. Uh, the way you react to other people and behave is your karma. Your karma being your uh, your conditioning, the way you are, the way you think, and also, of course, um, you know what I suspect as uh, also a, a sort of accumulation. You know, there is sort of, there is an energy of a sort of accumulation uh, of energy from our past lives as well. So, you know. Um, 
For example, you know, I believe uh, people who have uh, perhaps come into life during the uh, slave trade and were uh, racist to African people uh, probably came back as as Africans themselves and um, experienced some sort of, of racism or, or prejudice or something. So, but uh, you know, beyond that, just looking at this life, um, you know, karma is quite quite simple, really. Um, and <clears throat> that you know, there's a difference between experiencing what you are now and everything that you have in your life now and uh, just having you know like positive thinking uh, positive thinking will help and it will it will get you there uh, but the, the important thing is to understand where we where you are at and why you're experiencing what you're experiencing and going beyond these labels of good and bad right uh, this is how we sort of transcend our karma through understanding uh, our karma, right? You know, yeah. I hope that I hope that sort of helps. Uh, anyone have a, a question in voice, or I'll just continue. Um, yeah, I do another one. <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, so you mentioned, and I watched another video of you uh, experiencing an astral projection into the afterlife. Yeah. Um, do you think there's some sort of external force that's sort of like guiding you in these projections? I mean, you spoke about you met these two people and they had like this cool symbol above their heads or something like that. Do you count those as guides or? Uh, yes, um, most likely, I suspect. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just wondering. Yeah. And and also I believe as well. Um you know, you said uh is there an external force guiding us during these projections? Uh well, yes. There there is a force and I wouldn't say it's external but uh internal. And in the sense that you know, as I as I uh keep repeating that in the there is this knowledge of of the known right of everything we learn of all our conditioning uh like that um diagram that i put in the in the uh channel of just all our past right and all our ego all our un unconsciousness and all our knowledge and all our conditioning and all the thoughts that are that sprout from that and our reactions to the external world are not necessarily our own thoughts. And when we go beyond that and connect with our, uh, in Gnosticism, they call it our innermost, our sort of, uh, you know, this connection within this, the central point of our sort of uh, connection to our consciousness, the, the sort of thoughts and energies and thoughts that come from there uh, is, is our sort of guiding force. And it, it's, this uh, this sort of deep silence intelligence that comes from within and not external not of this world not of uh, what we learn in books right you know it's a different type of knowledge an internal knowledge uh, gnosis right gnosis means uh, uh knowledge of direct experience rather than beliefs uh, that is that is our guiding force that is our sort of a uh, silent guardian, right? And we can all feel it when we get in touch with ourselves. It's that very small and innocent awareness, right? When you're walking across a, a street or a park um, and you you see a flower, right? And uh, you see, you just observe the flower and you're just looking at it. Um, you, know, you know, you're just seeing the colors, uh, what it looks like, and you just pass by and you're just silently looking at it. Well, in the same way, uh, that's how we need to look at ourselves. And in a way, to a certain extent, when we have these astral projections, we have that very silent and stable and peaceful awareness with us uh, during that time. And that's, that's, you know, we're not overthinking, we're just paying attention, just very, just very uh, direct attention. So, yeah.
as for you know guides and, and stuff like that um you know my latest video i i experienced uh, a guide um i i do believe that w there are many many guides uh and many sorts of forces and energies that are wanting to help humanity and us uh during this sort of time of darkness but also this time of awakening in humanity and i think if we ask uh we we receive right to use a christian quote so yeah thanks jim no problem i asked a question in the text chat. oh say yeah hi yes oh okay uh how do you reclaim your energy entirely <laughs> entirely eh? well that's uh i don't know if i've claimed my energy entirely but you know it's a very profound question um, and that's the whole goal right the whole purpose uh i constantly uh -huh. have people on my mind who drain me for my energy or people who have irritated so much to the point where i couldn't stand being in their presence or the idea of their existence I felt miserable in life for the circumstances of being around people who are negative and their energy affected me greatly. Uh, I've also had people stare into my eyes and it felt like they took the soul out of me. For the past year, I've felt kind of dead, like I lost all my energy completely and I'm kind of lacking a soul to be alive. Uh, in a clearer context, I lost the feeling of my of being myself and I almost feel, I don't feel like I know myself anymore because it's like I've fallen into the matrix all over again and I'm just on autopilot living my daily life. Well, you know, really good, um, very good question. And, uh, you know, uh, kudos to you for, you know, at least acknowledging all that. Uh, we have to be very honest with ourselves uh, when we, you know, to, to see where we are at life and, and, and all our struggles. Uh, a lot of people, some, you know, give yourself some credit. A lot of people, uh, don't even want to admit their uh, unconsciousness. And it's, it's the first step to, to recognize your own unconsciousness and accepting that and coming to terms with that is all part of the growth. Don't resist it. You know, don't say, oh, I'm just in such a crappy place. Uh, I'm not going to grow. You know, don't, don't resist it in that way. Just acknowledge it. It's just a movement in consciousness. It's just where you are now in this, in your particular experience and existence. And you are experiencing all that for, you know, some, uh, sort of reason. Um, so as for uh, Zandarev, can you meet yourself? <laughs> oh, he's gone. Okay. Um, so as for uh, reclaiming your energy, uh, maybe after this, check out my uh, video called uh, The Principle of um, The Principle of Conserving Energy. Now, this whole uh path of self-realization is at, about claiming our energy and so whenever wherever you are and whatever stage you're at is is where you start and everything you just said is a great place uh, to start meditation right a lot of people want to sit in meditation and think nice thoughts uh, of rainbows and butterflies and uh fanciful thoughts and positive thoughts. I will manifest my greatest uh, dreams and become this or that. But uh, if you want to be more authentic in your approach and you want to actually make a difference in, in, in your life, um, start with all your darkness and all this, uh, all these struggles and meditate with it and um, uh, just pay attention without judgment, right? And, you know, you said... You have people in your mind who've drained me for energy, uh, right? And you get irritated. Well, you have to ask yourself why, why you get irritated. And, you know, look into, you know, we have to understand this relationship with other people. And in higher perspectives, 
if you can sort of intuit this, I know that you're in a sort of lower place, um, but if you can intuit this, that, you know, our relationship with others, um, there is really no difference between uh, you and another person. And other people are just a reflection of yourself. And if you don't like or you have a, a negative reaction towards someone else, then you are just reacting to yourself. Because when you meet other people and you see them, um, you're because we're so trapped in our own world, right? Uh, we're not really seeing that other person. We're seeing an idea of them, and which is really an idea of ourselves, right? If we really saw other people for who they were, we would see the the essence of them. They, we we would recognize their soul and and not their ego. Uh, but because we're trapped in our own ego, we see the ego in others very easily too. And so, actually, uh, you know, instead of what many sort of monks do, right, go to the east and go into a temple and uh, escape society, uh, actually, uh, and this was called in, in Gnosticism, um, that life is a psychological gym. And these sorts of relationships actually are great opportunities for us to learn about ourselves and, and observe this chaos and disorder that happens within ourselves uh, to, to go beyond, to go beyond them. Um, I'm just, you know, reminded of a quote by Alan Watts. Let me find it. Uh, here it is, this one. This is a, a good kind of way to summarize what you said as well. Uh, it is evil which makes possible the recognition of virtue. To the degree you condemn and find evil in others, you are to that degree unconscious of the same thing in yourself. And I think that's a really nice uh, quote by Alan Watts there. So yeah, uh, you know, my, my kind of message is just to look into that. Uh, don't resist that. Don't judge yourself. Uh, don't think that, you know, you've lost your soul or something. Um, be grateful for these experiences. Uh, they are opportunities to learn and you know, with with patience and uh, sort of faith that you can go beyond all that, uh, it, it will happen. And of course, it may, it can take a little bit of effort as well, right? If you're living on autopilot um, and in in unco unconsciousness, uh, you know, it, it doesn't even take that much effort, really. Uh, just pay attention and just be mindful, and uh, you'll know what to what to do when you start to stop identifying with those kind of thoughts, with that, with those kind of negative uh, patterns and thought forms, just see them for what, what they are. And through understanding and acceptance of all that, of, of all this noise and on all these thoughts that you're having, uh, you, you can naturally go beyond it. So I hope that helps somewhat. Um, uh, check out my video called uh, the principle of conserving energy, uh, I think that might help as well. So good luck to you. I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. Uh, Lucian, is there energy healing possible in the astral plane, which could have a positive impact on illnesses of the physical body? I read about a healing center in Focus 27. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, healing is possible. Like many uh, abilities, uh, the astral plane is a great place uh, to learn them all in a direct and instinctive way. Because uh, in the astral, things are a lot more energetic and a lot more direct, rather than in, in the physical, right? In the third dimension, we have this logical thinking. Um, this, and that's why science rules this, this plane, right? Uh, but over there, the intellect is not, at, uh, does not rule reality. Uh, emotions and energy does. And so, say if you, 
uh, feel a particular way, uh, you can, you can, you know, when you, you can start to, uh, kind of move this energy or, or transmute it. Right. And if it's the same feeling, if you come out of body and you're in a lower dimension, a lower, uh, because the planes, the astral planes and, and this, the kind of subplanes within them, when, when I say that there are the lower astral uh, and different levels of, of the astral planes, we're really just dealing with levels of consciousness. And so if you find yourself in a, a lower astral plane and uh, say, uh, you know, related to the uh, 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 Jojo who asked about the um, mantras to, to go to a higher plane, well, you're just shifting your energy uh, higher. And so you go from a lower plane to a higher plane and, and you start to uh, vibrate or uh, and change your whole level of being and consciousness and awareness uh, to something that's more uh, subtle, uh, more refined, less dense, which is which is which naturally has a more positive tone to it. And this is you know synonymous with with healing, as is uh, you know as I've been talking about this whole psychological aspect of getting out of our own heads and going on beyond our own dreams because all of that is our unconscious behaviors and um, all our angers and emotions really do have uh, a more harmful energetic charge than we realize. For example, when someone is very angry, uh, extremely, you know, angry, um, afterwards there is a sort of charge there if you've you know if you've ever felt it we've all been angry right and uh, afterwards once the anger has finished uh, you feel a sort of energetic charge and um uh even in you know gnosticism it was taught i think it was the, the kidneys or the liver liver um this sort of energetic center um gets damaged and also our sort of uh you know like third eye can become kind of atroph atrophied simply through the, the emotion of anger. So we need to start to understand ourselves and, you know, ener energetically and uh, psychologically. And it's all, it's all synonymous with, with self-healing. Um, yeah, I've not, I've not, uh, experienced, uh, you know, I've not tried to do like energetic healing, but I know, uh, Jürgen, as Eva has done, he wrote about in his book, uh, something like he pulled his groin in physical life. Uh, and then he went out of body and he, in his astral body, he observed his physical body and in his groin, he could see, uh, this kind of dark black hole, uh, energetic hole. And he, um, sent love, uh, uh an energy, healing energy into his groin uh, filled it with light. And then he went back, he woke back up in his physical body and he had no pain anymore. So yeah. it's kind of synonymous with, uh, you know, like Reiki and stuff like that. So, yes. Well, someone I deeply love died unconventionally last year. Uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, I also have other loved ones who died abnormally. Uh, I've heard of other people being successful in connecting with them while out of body. Uh, I'm not yet consistent in getting out consciously, but have tried uh, several times, uh, perhaps in double digits. Uh, I have searched for her repeatedly while out, but never can find her. Though I have had assistant from assistance from quiet beings who feel very kind and safe and seem to either guide me or support me somehow despite not finding her. Uh, yes. How do I find her? Um, well, so she died last year. Um, you know, there can be various reasons. Um, uh, for example, uh, I don't know my biological father. Um, and my mum has never really told me much about him, uh, but when I ask, it's never anything good. Uh, he was sort of like a criminal or something. He did a lot of bad things, she says, and uh, I suspect, we, we both suspect uh, he's he's probably dead by now, considering his age, perhaps. Um, 
And I've tried looking for him in the astral, uh, but every time I am faced with with a kind of energetic block or a distraction, or I just go into a sort of negative feeling or, or just a void or a blackness, or I, or I just wake up. So something is stopping me from uh, finding out the reality of, of his you know, soul and who he is. So there's various reasons um, that we may not find someone. Um, usually, if the person has recently passed away, it's usually to do with the fact that they're still in a kind of adjusting phase. Uh, they're still adjusting to the fact that they've, you know, died, that there's an afterlife, uh, that they need to review their life. Uh, particularly, you know, did your friend, uh, did your loved one, you know, have a very difficult life? Um, maybe she, uh, maybe she has a lot to process and, and so she's not ready to meet, meet you usually. <laughs> no, but in the end, yes. Um, so yes, I don't know, you know, maybe she's, she's still struggling at there's really various reasons, but all you can do, you know, uh, you can keep trying and really, yeah, as you've probably already tried, once you're out of body, you can just call out to these people, especially if you have a connection with them, you simply just have to hold them in your mind, in your heart, uh, say their name and intend to just you know, move towards them, find them. Um, and if, if you can't find them, then, you know, I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't really, uh, suggest or advise beyond that really. Um, yeah, I hope you do, uh, maybe get some contact, uh, but there, there are reasons and, you know, that's sort of beyond my scope of understanding. But yes, I hope you find her or have an experience of her. Mm. Yes. Usually, uh, when people, when, when loved ones pass away, uh, they, they usually, uh, visit us in our dreams and we, we wake up with memories of them. People say, Oh, Oh, I dreamt of them, uh, but it was actually them, you know, uh, visiting us, uh, you know, to say, hi, I'm fine. How are you? Um, so look out for your dreams as well not just your astral projections. Um, hi there, Gene. Another question. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thanks for, uh, for uh, stepping up. <laughs> um, yeah, earlier you spoke about willing yourself to project at the gates of sleep. Mm -hmm. What is this gate like? What is this phase in almost sleepness like? Yeah. Like, how will you know you're there? Yeah. Um, let me find another diagram, put it there. So, I mean, the phase and, and, and the gate I'm talking about, it is simply just what we experience every night. It's, it's that yeah. uh, in between, between wakefulness and sleep. It's that transition uh, and that's, that's the gate. And we can separate during that transition or, or we can awaken our consciousness at any point during our, our sleep. So on the diagram where it's, you see the yellow arrow exit here, that that's the gate I'm talking about. And so, uh, okay. yes. And so towards the left of it, um, in the light blue box, uh, a lot of people try to, they try too hard to exit when say physical awareness is too high or non-physical awareness is too low. And so it's okay to maybe attempt if you, if they want, um, as, as so as long as they don't get too frustrated and, uh, you know, they can attempt and then just quickly recognize that, okay, uh, this won't work. I'm too aware. I'm too attached to my physical body. So I just need to let go of my mind. Uh, and I just need to carry on relaxing as I normally would during, uh, sleep during when I, when I ordinarily go to sleep. And then, uh, in that moment of, of wakefulness and sleep, uh, you can hopefully, you know, because, you know, it's at that point, you know, you're very like, 
going into a trance state, you're so groggy and you're not really self-aware. Uh, yeah, it, it's a challenge. And uh, yeah, as I said, you can intend and also affirmations uh, can help with this as we're going to sleep, you know, because you're going into sort of deeper states uh, in your brain waves. And when we go into those deeper states of brain waves, when we, when we bring some sort of conscious awareness during these deep states, uh, you know, it's kind of like planting a seed deep within our mind. Uh, that, and we can say, you know, I will astral project. Um, I will leave my body. Uh, I will be aware within my dreams. And simply through that intention uh, and sort of anticipation, right? If you've ever uh, set an alarm, uh, sorry, if you've ever, instead of setting an alarm, said, okay, I'm going to wake up at, uh, at 10 o'clock. And if you, or, and if you found yourself waking up at 10 o'clock uh, naturally, or, you know, I'm sure many of you have probably woken up uh, a few minutes before your alarm, um, you know, this yeah. is, yeah, this is kind of proof that, right. You know, you can set your subconscious to do things for you and yes, affirmations can help. Uh, but also, you know, as I said before, being aware of your physical surroundings, uh, perhaps doing reality checks and getting into this habit, uh, all helps with, with, uh, exiting the body. Uh, but really, yeah, we need to, it's important to let go during that time. Um, there's certain mantras as well. Uh, I've taught one in my video called, um, my, uh, simple step-by-step -step method for astral projection. Oh yeah, it's fire yeah. on. Yeah, so uh, there's been a fair few people who have had uh, success with that. And so, you know, that's an example of keeping that man, uh, keeping a sort of mantra or sound that we identify as, you know, an intention for astral projection. And we just keep doing it as we fall to sleep, you know, and at some point you'll find yourself uh, coming out of body and, or at least be in some sort of vivid dream where you, when you hopefully start to uh, have a crack in your consciousness that gives some sort of uh, conscious awareness or recognition that you're in a dream state. And then you can also astral project from the dream state as well. So, so then the mantras are there to sort of maintain awareness as you dip into sleep? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. You, yes. You can, uh, but you don't, you can uh, maintain awareness. Uh, but it's also very, it's also very difficult, and it's not, you know, as I'm saying, it's not necessary to to main to maintain perfect awareness, right? Um, just just have the intention and just go to sleep, and at some point uh, it will happen. But it, it will, you know, you will sort of uh, reach a, a precipice where unconsciousness does. Uh, come in at, at least maybe you know at the minimum at least for a moment you just lose complete unconsciousness and then boom you start to feel the vibrations and you start to come out of body um yeah so there is a sort of uh you know kind of faith there right you need uh, kind of you need a leap of faith because you do usually want you know through this gate of sleep uh, there is a transition or a moment at least where there is unconsciousness. So, yeah. Hmm. Thanks, Gene. Uh, I have one last question. <laughs> so, problem. whenever I do attempt yeah. <laughs> to, uh, I obviously do the direct method every night. Um, they always lead to really good lucid dreams. Is there a reason for this? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, doing, uh, you know, Ashul, did you say lucid dreams or vivid dreams? Uh, a bit of both, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the great thing about uh, astral projection. When we make these this greater effort of astral projection rather than just uh, lucid dreaming, um, lucid dreaming occurs naturally and spontaneously because we're sending all this energy and awareness and contemplativeness into our dreams. Uh, we're starting to be aware of our dreams, and of course, you're exercising some sort of. Uh, conscious awareness before you sleep that has a sort of energetic charge uh, in your subconscious. And so uh, you're going to 
it's it's just natural. You're going to have at least at the minimum, you know, for anyone practicing astral projection, at the minimum, you should at least be having, uh, you know, vivid dreams uh, and, and at least have the ability to remember them a lot better. So, and obviously, especially if you're recalling them every morning as well. So, yeah, it really, it's just natural, this whole phenomena of um, experiencing dreams. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, you probably have seen this uh, diagram um, but yeah, you know, lucid dreaming, yeah. uh, dreaming and, you know, astral projection is related. And so, yeah, I think it's just completely natural really. And, uh, don't be disappointed or demotivated if you don't have an astral projection. If you have a dream, uh, look into it and you can usually learn some, something about yourself during that dream and, uh, you know, keep a diary, uh, before you go to sleep. Uh, look at those um, dreams before you go to sleep again so that you get in touch with this kind of inner psychological world that we have because, you know, that is the barrier usually towards uh, astral projection because instead of astral projecting, we're stuck in dreams. So it's important to also be aware of our dreams uh, at the very least. Yeah. So then the practicing of like these techniques you use for astral projection, they lead to vivid dreams and then you take notes of your dreams and then you mm -hmm. start to become more aware in your dreams yes. and then you start to become more aware before you fall into sleep. It just all happens naturally over time. Then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for example, um, you know, if you're ha having a, a nightmare all the time or, uh, uh, a dream that you're arguing with someone that you really hate in physical life, then yeah, that's that's a very clear sign. You need that's something you need to meditate on. That's something you need to let go. Uh, it's all it's too distracting, and it, you're not going to astral project because you're all, instead you're always dreaming of uh, arguing with this person, right? So that that's just you know one example of uh, of how dreams can help. Obviously, a lot of dreams are embedded in symbolism and. Metaf uh, metaphorical meanings um, and you can in time begin to learn to uh, interpret them and understand them as well so it's all about That's you know as basically a, yeah sorry. I, was, yeah. I was just thinking it's basically like you're sorting your life out and Absolutely. checking check boxes <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yes it's you know uh, as my uh, book says, uh, astral projection is synonymous with the awakening of consciousness, the the awakening out of our dreams and this gradual path. Right? It's not just a oh, let's astral project. It, it's it's a path and it's a it's a, a gradual learning experience. And this learning experience doesn't have a destination. It doesn't have an end goal. It doesn't have conclusions. It we're always learning, always learning about ourselves and. Uh, letting go of the past and um, perhaps, you know, when we've learned everything we have to in this life, we start to recall past lives. So it's a great journey of understanding. Yeah. Thanks, Gene. These questions and answers really helped me. <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. They're very good questions. Would a thirst for knowledge be an okay reason to pursue astral projection? Uh, yes, but if you want a deeper, uh, if you want your knowledge to take on new depths, then also uh, inquire into why you want that knowledge, right? Because everyone has a thirst for knowledge, and we also have to understand what knowledge is. And um, as I said at the start, knowledge. There is two types of knowledge, knowledge of the external world, knowledge of books, right? You know, a person can read uh, 30 books on astral projection or 100 books on astral projection and have no experiences. And a person can read one book on astral projection and have a ton of experiences. So one person reads the book and learns nothing. And then the other person uh, reads one book, uh, but also learns as well, right? One learns and one reads, uh, you know, just reads. So accumulation of knowledge, uh, accumulation of forms, external forms, 
uh, is one thing. And then the accumulation of self-knowledge that arises from within, from direct experience, and that does not arise from, from intellectually thinking, right? Uh, it are two different things. So, but yes, uh, ultimately, in, in, a, in a more higher perspective, uh, the thirst for knowledge or higher knowledge, spiritual knowledge, is, of course, is, is a great way to, is a great um, aspiration, spiritual aspiration. Uh, and actually, you'll find that many of us, I mean, that is actually the ultimate goal of astral projection, right? It's not some um, casual hobby uh, to kind of, <laughs> you know, go flying and have fun. I mean, it is, but at the highest purpose of astral projection is to uh, is to learn, is to understand ourselves and existence and reality and gain wisdom. And actually, you'll find that uh, a lot of us, I suspect. Uh, have uh, we we learn in the astral uh, unconsciously a lot of humanity uh, I suspect and I, I what I've experienced somewhat uh, do go to uh, astral planes unconsciously during sleep and receive uh, wisdom and uh, in new information during the sleep so this is why it's important to be aware of of what's going on in our consciousness when we're asleep. Um, I, I've given you know examples of this uh, in my, if you check out my video called uh, uh, Meeting a Priestess in the Astral and, and Unconscious People, uh, an, uh, an unconscious class, right? I, I went to a temple and there were about 100 people who were unconsciously in the astral uh, and listening to this priestess who was giving these teachings to people so this is why um you know it's important to be aware of what's going on in our consciousness and you know some people uh, suddenly wake up some mornings and come to a spontaneous decision that they want to change their job or they want to end a certain relationship or you know uh, you know have you ever woke up and you you're just in a crappy mood, or maybe you're in a really good mood. Well, um, if you were aware of what is going on and the experiences that you're having at night, then you would understand more uh, about what's going on. And then through that understanding be uh, comes self-knowledge. As I said before, uh, self-knowledge is, is not separate from uh, knowledge of reality. Right? Uh, understanding yourself is not separate from understanding reality because we create our reality. Uh, our observation of reality um, is ultimately, you know, there is actually no observer and observed. And enlightenment and understanding and knowledge comes when we realize that there is no separation between the observer and the observed. They, they are one and the same thing. What you see externally is just a reflection of, of your internal uh, consciousness, if that makes sense. From Kai, uh, Jean, what are your thoughts? When dreams provide you with something you're longing for in this physical. For example, earlier this week, I was missing my girlfriend extremely. Her parents have forced us to stop talking until she moves out. That's not very nice, Kai. You should, you should tell them. You should tell them off. <laughs> um, and then that night, I had a rather vivid dream of being in a relationship again. Uh, I felt an enormous amount of love and uh, caringness. But when I awoke, I felt rather sad because it was a dream. Well, you know, it's quite it's quite self uh, explanatory, isn't it? Really, right? It, it's it's just your desires, your subconscious desires. Um, you know, uh, in in one perspective, you can see it as it's just your subconscious 
uh, urge and desire to see your girlfriend, right? Uh, or if you want to perhaps be more uh, metaphysical about it and um, kind of astral uh, language, uh, perhaps, you know, if it was an objective experience at some point, um, your you and your girlfriend uh, are perhaps, you know, uh, sending energy to each other and, and your, your souls or consciousness are, are meeting each other in the astral plane. Uh, but regardless, you know, it, it's just a, re- it's just a reflection of your physical occurrences in your waking life. You know, as I said, uh, the stream of thoughts and the movements of our physical waking experience and reality uh, doesn't stop when we go to sleep. Or the only difference is that our physical body goes to sleep. Those same movements of dreams and the movement of our consciousness and desires and anxieties and dramas, etc., 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 all carry on as we go to sleep. So, and the key to go beyond all that is simply observation because this stream happens right? It just happens and we're within it and we're not aware of it. So when we take a step back and simply just become aware of it and see it, then we create a bit of space for ourselves to explore properly, right? Imagine uh, any thought form, right? And uh, imagine a thought form as a planet in space, right? The space is your consciousness. And in these thought forms, we're so attached and so overwhelmed with them. And then and that we we are inside the middle of the planet, and so therefore we can't see the planet. It's like a fish under the sea. Does the fish know that there is that water exists because it's always inside it? Uh, it, it doesn't unless it uh, comes out of the the water, or or if you come out of that planet. And so this is what it means to have conscious awareness of the thought forms that occur in the space of our consciousness. I hope that helps. Very nice questions, everyone. Does uh, anyone have any questions? You know, feel free to unmute your mic. I think it's only Jordan that's been Hello. asking. <laughs> oh, hi, Sage. Do you feel that there has been an increased amount of people having spiritual experiences lately? I'd love to hear your insight. Uh, as in like what I do in my personal life or just uh, in the world in general? I'd say in general. I've noticed a lot of things on social media. It's kind of exploding more than I've ever seen it before. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, right? This is a very interesting time. Um, Society and where we're at now, uh, you know, things are and have been for a while uh, in, in embedded in this in darkness, right? In materialism, in pure materialism, and uh, we m- most people, you know, have their faith and uh, sense of comfort and uh, intellectual satisfaction in modern science and everything like that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but uh, we're so uh, materialistic, right? And so many people are just, you know, we, you know, so many people are, they are, they are raised in this world to just get up, eat, go to school, accumulate knowledge uh, from whatever book or subject or topic. And then they go, you know, through, uh, and through the systems, get a job uh, and work 50 hours a week come home and this is this is not uh if if you're just living purely in that for the existence of that there is surely to be some kind of dam breaking right you 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 can't just live like that and i think a lot of people in this day and age are uh, absolutely waking up to the fact that um you know that there is a calling to 
break free from that. And it's not really breaking free externally, it's breaking free from within because they, they've put all their kind of eggs into into uh, material baskets rather than uh, spiritual baskets of, right, of, of understanding. And it, it really goes in line with a lot of, you know, even in, in Gnosticism, uh, they, they talked about the fact that uh, in this age, in this uh, onset of, you know, you know, the internet was still a, a relatively recent and influx of all this information, uh, you know, so many things are manifesting in so many levels in this physical dimension, um, an acceleration of technology. We're all here. Uh, we're all from different countries and we're all able to, you know, we're all able to share information like this. Um, and because it's technology, you might not see it as, as meaningful, uh, but it absolutely is in my perspective and there is a reason for why we are able to share information like this and so yeah i definitely th you know think that I, and, and and i'm you know personally really uh impressed by uh younger generations and because even though the younger generation right now is kind of crazy with all this tiktok and social media and stuff uh, at the same time you know because the younger, the kind of older generations look down on younger generations, right? Because they don't, they don't uh, have critical thoughts and they don't have self awareness. But uh, at the same time, there is a huge amount of, I think, more than ever, um, of interest in in spiritual topics, uh, even in things like TikTok. So, yeah, I think there is a huge momentum, and I think in the next uh, decade or two decades, we're going to see even more people uh, interested in these kind of things. Uh, you know, and at first, of course, it starts with meditation and very, um, very kind of little layers. Uh, you know, in reality, astral projection is a very advanced topic to learn spiritually. And if someone is, is interested in a spiritual, it, it's not something that I, I would usually recommend to most people. Uh, to, to begin with, because you really need a, a foundation of understanding first. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people, and of course, during this pandemic, right? Um, as I said, I think things do happen for a reason. And the fact that so many people for how long has this been going on for a year now? I think there is a reason why, you know, so many people are forced to be in isolation, Right, because isolation is what you need for uh, astral projection in a way, right? The internal isolation um, to see yourself for who you are and, and face yourself and face reality. So, yeah, I think we're living in a really exciting time. And the, the subreddit as well it has has boomed like crazy. There's, uh, there's about 1,000 new members every week. Uh, I think it's at, let me see. It's at 212,000 now. Um, yeah, so it's a growing topic and we're in an exciting stage of life. And, you know, we don't really need to look into uh, kind of prophecies of new age and stuff. Uh, when we really look into it and understand the kind of psychology of it and, and where humanity is progressed uh, you can kind of feel the momentum of where we're going to go and i'm not saying that we're going to go into a nice new world where everything's going to be easy uh, if things do accelerate the way they do i think um it's going to be uh let, let's call it a challenge because you know surely all these old systems, these old paradigms and these old way of thinking, you know, being in our intellect, always thinking, uh, you know, those are going to collapse and there's going to be some sort of uh, chaos, right? Surely. And there already is, right? With protests and all the dramas of the world, if you, you know, just put on the news and you can see all the, the craziness of the world today. So, yeah. <clears throat> Hello, in Jordan, regards again. to the... <laughs> <laughs> in, re in regards to the uh, practice of astral projection yeah um do you go in with the intent to gain specific information or are you just open to whatever experience arises 
Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you can maybe sense I'm quite a, a meditative person. I enjoy meditation and, and reading uh, kind of profound teachings and things like that. Um, so personally, uh, I don't do it often. Um, perhaps when I'm more sufficient at it, uh, I will. Um, but, but on one level, I do. Uh, because <laughs> for example, my, my last experience where I went into the astral and asked the guide, you know, uh, because I was quite stressed in, in life, physical life. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, as above, so below, when you're working on yourself and taking this journey of, uh, self-discovery and dealing with your personal challenges, uh, those questions naturally sometimes seem to be answered in whatever experience. Uh, you may just experience something and, and learn it naturally, or you might uh, be you might ask a guide like I did in, in my latest experience. So, yeah, that, but with that said, you can absolutely go uh, into the... And, and it's a good idea to do that, actually, too, to have a set intention of what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And that helps us get past the kind of... Uh, any kind of like struggle or overthinking during the vibrational stage or sleep paralysis or something like that. Um, because instead of overthinking during those times and, oh my God, what's happening? What's this? What am I seeing? Instead, you give your focus and attention and energy to what you want to achieve, uh, where you want to go, uh, what you want to learn. And and when we when we know what we want to do and what we want, what we set out to do for our purpose, uh, then it, it becomes a lot more easier and uh, our, our energy knows what to do and, and where to go instead of uh, overthinking. So yeah, it's a good idea uh, to set those intentions uh, and, and have a firm resolve, but you don't have to, you know, you can just go into the astral and enjoy exploring, walking around, flying, go to, uh, you know, go into space uh, visit another country and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Have you ever experienced anything that's paranormal or extraterrestrial? And do you have any stories about that? Uh, extraterrestrial, yes. Um, paranormal in, in what sense? Yeah, because I feel like somehow this like astral stuff, different dimensions, is somehow connected. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I've I've not had an extensive experience with sort of uh, other beings, but I, I do believe that uh, other beings do reside in in uh, these more subtle dimensions alongside us. And I think, I think there is, um, there are uh, other species, uh, intelligent ones that who are here to aid us and help us and guide us. Um, and they can also probably do exist, whether they exist in the third dimension or, or interchange between uh, all the different dimensions, right, where we can't perceive them because we're stuck in this three-dimensional world. Um, yeah, I, I had an experience uh, a while ago, a very vivid one, where I was out of body and I saw a uh, a mothership. I, I looked at the full moon. It was a full moon, and I saw a mothership uh, between you know it was it was somewhere between earth and and the moon and uh i mean if it was really close to the moon i mean it would have been enormous i mean like the immensity and size of this thing was was huge and then i saw other ships uh flying off that ship so i didn't feel anything like ominous from it i just, but it was it's like when you when you look into the sky and you see the immensity of it and you feel these kind of goosebumps or if you look under the sea and it's, you know, I saw and this huge mass and body of, of this, uh, this thing, uh, this, uh, ship was, was enormous. And obviously I knew straight away that this was 
technology that is way beyond our human uh, primitive uh, technology. So, and also, um, it's a, it's quite a long experience, but uh, it's on my channel if you're interested. Um, it's called uh, going to the lower astral and traveling to another planet. And uh, to answer that also answers uh, the question that Jojo had earlier about uh, mantras. Um, I was in the lower astral, and then I used a mantra, and it propelled me. Uh, deep into space and I arrived at another planet where I kind of witnessed these sort of uh, oceanic humanoid species. So that's a, that's an interesting one if you want to look into that. Nice. You can, you know, if you want to tell it, sure. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, it was a 40 but, uh... minute video. I think it does it justice to, uh, if you you know if you if you listen to the video rather than me just casually yeah. saying it here yeah <laughs> but in short it was um it was a really immense uh planet that was very of a high vibration and those beings were it kind of felt like i was in a mental plane rather than the physical plane because uh, and this planet, I, before I landed in the planet, I saw a vision of the planet, and it was mostly of water. And uh, yes, and when I when I saw when I was in this planet, it was just uh, just I, I can't describe to you how joyful and, and happy and uh, just serene and how everything and how these beings uh, lived in, in joyfulness and playfulness and, and harmony with, with their environment and, and with nature um, and with the sea creatures that were, were around there as well. So, yeah. Uh, Very interesting. I've heard uh, like the Sirius constellation, like Sirius A and Sirius B, they have a lot of water like sort of creatures and stuff that live there. Like that's just what I've heard from, I don't know, probably some yeah. other like video channeling, something like that. Okay. I watch a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I asked when I when I told you know when I uh, revealed that experience, uh, I asked people you know what they think because I don't know you know I just went to this planet. I didn't have a a sat nav <laughs> so to speak, and uh, yeah, so maybe it was in Sirius or something, or you know I don't know why I went to that particular planet. Maybe it's because of a past life or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, maybe I didn't know there was water-based uh, planets in Sirius. So thanks for letting me know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and here's a, a picture. I made this picture to try and capture what the, that UFO looked like. I, w I was standing in the middle of a field. There was a full moon, and uh, that was basically the shape of the uh, the UFO. And I, you can see the little dots I put there because I saw, well, those are, those, uh, mul try to multiply those dots, uh, in the hundreds because, uh, that's why I saw these little windows of just hundreds and hundreds of, uh, detailed, uh, windows. So I don't know what that was, but yeah, it was definitely an experience to, uh, see it flying in the sky. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah yeah i've seen stuff too <laughs> i have pictures and whatnot uh silas uh you think you can travel back in your own past if you shift reality and be able to change past scenarios uh no i don't believe you can i believe that the experience we experiences we have in our past are meant to happen and whatever has happened has happened and you need to learn from those experiences and not cling to them. What you can change now is your understanding and attachment to those experiences that you had in the past and change your perspective of them, change how you feel about them, and change your sort of attachment to them. That's that's how you change the past, really. You change your perspective of it. Uh, and through changing the past and... Um, transmuting those you know any kind of negative uh feelings that we have of the past uh sets 
our foundation towards a better future as well. Because, you know, if we've got all these past experiences that we resist, that we don't think were meant to happen, that we have a desire to change, then, um, you know, this is, uh, this is something we have to look into. Why, why do we want to change it? Why are we resisting it? Why do we think uh, it, it wasn't meant to be that way? So all those things are for us to learn and understand and uh, eventually, you know, transcend and let go of so that we can, so that we can, uh, you know, see the challenges that we have every day and, and in the future, right? We cannot be bogged down with past experiences and past scenarios and, and the dramas of our, you know, internal narratives and the narratives of other people because we've got, we've got our entire lives ahead of us, right? Um, yeah. And, and if we're too focused on the past, we're, we're not going to be able to deal with the, the, the challenges of the future. And actually, if you don't, if you don't deal with the challenges of the past, um, and you don't understand them, then the same things are going to occur, the same dramas, the same, uh, lessons that you need to learn and they're going to come in different forms and different ways. And this can also be seen in our multiple lives, right? This is the wheel of samsara. We, we, we don't learn what we're supposed to learn. And so therefore we keep coming back and having the same experiences with the same people, just in different timelines uh, and different uh, eras of humanity. So, yeah. How is remote viewing different from AP? Um, I'm not uh, really into remote viewing, uh, but as I, uh, because, you know, astral projection is, uh, you know, it's a lot more easier to teach in the sense that um, one can have direct verified experiences because you know, it's the, you really know and feel uh, the tangibility and the palpability of that experience in astral projection. You're completely out of your body. You have all your, your full senses and full waking awareness intact. And so, um, and, and you don't feel your physical body at all. And so with remote, remote viewing, it's a little more, uh, tricky because, you know, how do you tell what you're seeing is coming from your imagination or, or uh, actual reality? Uh, there is a way to do that. It takes practice, but yes. Anyway, with that said, remote viewing is uh, seeing locations in your mind's eye, sort of like uh, tuning your inner vision uh, to a radio. And that radio tunes to specific uh, locations um, in, in this physical shared reality. Uh, so it's seeing it. It's it's literally remote viewing, right? Viewing of the of remote distances. Uh, whereas astral projection is a complete, complete uh, sensual uh, out of body experience, where you you have you're literally in another body, and you can literally feel uh, things with your your senses. You can hear uh, sounds and speak to people in a completely personable way, just like you can in the physical. So those are the differences. Uh, very, very clear differences, actually. And yeah, they are completely different. I think some people think they're the same, but they're, they're definitely not. Uh, can you experience pre-birth memories and past lives? Do you have any idea of what we were before we were born into this world? What's your take on this? Just curious. <laughs> um, Yes, uh, you know, as I as I said, I, I've not personally uh, been interested yet into past lives. I am getting more interested into it and, and thinking about it more, uh, especially since my last experience where I recalled uh, an experience. Because what I've read about past lives uh, was exactly the way I experienced uh, the recall of uh, the memory. You know, I had a recent experience last week where. I 
remembered and recalled that I astral projected as a child. So, and during that experience, because I, and, and I was shown this experience as I, uh, after a question that I asked my guide, um, during that experience, on one level, I was a child again, astral projecting, feeling all the giddy uh, and playful emotions that I had as a child. Uh, you know, I was coming in and out of body, playing with toys, uh, throwing uh, objects around the room, and then going back to my physical body, uh, doing the same thing, and then I would go back to my physical body and just just play around, and it was really easy to do so. So on one level, I was the child again, but on another level, I was observing uh, myself. And, you know, I obviously I, my usual sense of self, my future self, me here and now, was completely uh, in a sort of state of shock or surprise as to what was going on. I, I couldn't believe that, you know, I astral projected as a child. I always thought that I started when I was 18 when I, uh, you know, started astral projection, but actually, uh, I did it quite masterfully as a very young child when I was maybe two years old or three years old. So yes. And, uh, past lives are meant to be, uh, sort of experienced in this way and this is a great this is the great thing about astral projection uh, you can you can experience um you are you know meant to experience past lives uh, like this and uh, pre-birth memories i mean from what i understand you know and what i've experienced is that uh during some time a period of time um you know, I say time, but it's it's the astral, right? Uh, there's not really time, uh, but during that time in in the astral, we, as above, so below. After death, we, what you know, I suspect is we, ex- we continue our learning just in the same way we did in the physical, and you know, and most of us, especially, are not uh, very spiritual, and we continue our learning and our progression, and we have a lot of things to review. We have all our negative uh, relationships with other people. And so eventually, you know, we we start to meet all those people again. We start to, uh, you know, say, you know, maybe uh, ask for forgiveness or we forgive other people. And we start to learn about ourselves. And eventually, at some point down the line, when we're ready, and when we feel like, okay, you know, I need to take my learning to the next level again, uh, you'll probably, for whatever reason, uh, choose to come back into another physical body uh, to continue uh, your journey. So that's that's my take on that anyway. Yeah, that reminds me of the one line I heard that we're uh, spiritual beings having a human experience. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, we are, you know, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, uh, but also um, we're also a human beings having a spiritual experience as well, right? <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> um yeah, because, you know, uh, we are uh, spiritual beings having a human experience. Uh, it kind of implies that somewhere deep down, you know, we're, we're awakened and have chosen to come to this physical life, like you said, to, to learn and expand. Um, and that's good, uh, thinking that we're awakened deep down. Um, but also, you know, if you look at we are human beings having a spiritual experience as well, um, you know, we can realize that uh, this this material limitation is actually uh, a profoundly powerful and spiritual thing as well. So we're so we're having a spiritual experience as well. Um, the the most ultimate form of a spiritual experience to choose to come to this physical, rigid, uh, difficult life. Uh, because in the more limit, the more we can uh, learn. So. In that sense, the material is spiritual as well. It's uh, crazy <laughs> to think that so many things are a part of the same side of the coin, or you know, absolutely, 
you know, the two sides. It's like yeah. the observer and the observed. Yeah. They're both the same. It's all yeah. connected. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh so that's uh once I woke up around seven AM, went back to sleep. I was in my dream all of a sudden and I had the feeling like everything was artificial and fake, like dreams are, right? Yeah, then all of a sudden I snapped back into reality, except the reality I was in was different. Uh, I was sitting against a wall in a jail cell and watching a screen on the opposite wall, which was supposed to represent a simulation of uh, the 3D reality. Uh, this other dimension of reality felt too real, and all of a sudden I started hearing a frequency from the jail cell window, and I snapped back to uh, physical life. Yes. Uh, so, what's your what's your opinion about living in a simulation? Well, you know, I don't know whether. I mean, sure, in a in a in a in a very high higher perspective, uh, the universe is uh, sort of a simulation game. Um, uh, I think I, I gave this in my last video as well. Uh, there's a there's a Hindu word called Leela, L I L A. Uh, which in Sanskrit means uh, play, and and it points towards the fact, the reality that God or you know gods are 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 using this universe or uh, a form um, as a you know as a form of play, uh, creating and destroying in order to learn about itself. So, sure, we're we're also a simulation, and I. Uh, and that's on a macrocosmic level, right? And in a microcosmic level, uh, the, the one that matters and the one that we have to learn and, and realize is that we live our, in our own simulation. And just like how you said that the dream was artificial and fake, oh yes, that's the that's the simulation aspect of of the dream, the projection of your subconscious and um, actually feeling that artificialness and fakeness is is on the verge of uh, breaking that dream or going beyond that dream, right? Which is the title of my book, right? Beyond Dreaming. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, as, as to whether that was a reality, it could have been. Uh, it's up to you to decide and what you, how you experience, how you interpret it and carry on your kind of uh, own understanding of your experiences because it's your experience, right? Not mine. Um, yeah. Well, with that said, also, you know, uh, prisons, uh, dreaming of being in a prison is a very, is a very common dream. And of course, it's kind of symbolic that we're stuck in our own, uh, stuck in our own conditioning, like I've been speaking about. Uh, Lucian, can you lose your grounding? When you overdo AP, how do you deal with fears when inducing uh, out-of-body experiences? Uh, I would be scared seeing a UFO during an OB. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if you were here for the whole thing, but maybe, you know, uh, listen back in the recording uh, about what I talked about. Fear and, you know, fear just being a perspective um, and, and to go beyond fear, we need a little courage and we also need to change our, our understanding and, and change our perspective of what we, we, of why we're fearful. We need to self-inquire into why we feel fear and we feel fear because of our conditioning of what we've learned from this external, uh, three-dimensional world, right? We've kind of been taught to fear what we don't know, um, but we need to uh, instead open our minds to what we don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, it depends on how you react to to seeing that UFO. Uh, sure, you know, if I saw that UFO, I, I could have felt fear. In a way, you know, so we have to understand, we have to go beyond the labels of fear and get in touch with ourselves energetically and emotionally, right? I saw that UFO and I felt this, you know, as I said, when you when you look into the night sky and you see a vast uh, something immeasurable, and and you feel a kind of awe about it, um, it's it's just a big emotion. And whether you, it's your choice. It's your own psychology as to whether you react fearfully or you just 
take it in as this kind of awe, breathtaking uh, sight and not label it with with uh, judgments. Because if you're fearful of it, um, well, you know, just see that it's illogical because you don't know what it is. And you don't know what it is and you don't know whether it's an immediate danger to you. So therefore, there's no, there's no way, there's no uh, reason to be fearful about it. So, of course, if you've watched many uh, uh, end of the world movies of, of, of <laughs> aliens killing human beings, then yes, perhaps you'll, you'll feel some fear. Um, uh, can you lose your grounding when you overdo AP? It really just depends on how you uh, how you approach it. If you approach it in the sense that you keep telling yourself you're some kind of god, um, you're some kind of uh, angel who was sent here by uh, the masters to liberate humanity and... Um, and uh, you keep doing exercise, spiritual exercises that maybe focus on uh, on like uh, Kundalini and Yusinkthi or, you know, uh, going into phantasmal ideas of, you know, your, you can, everything that you see in your imagination is a, is a vision from God. And, you know, this is how we, we become uh, ungrounded, right? Especially when we ignore uh, our personal challenges and we ignore our state of mind, right? Because if you really look into it, the state of mind at the moment, uh, the the intellect is, is chaotic um, and we have all our suffering and we have to be very mindful of that. And uh, uh, yes, you know, if you approach it in the sense that, you know, as I've been talking about, there are so many forms, so many thought forms that we identify with, uh, you know, it's all to do with our psychological makeup of the ego. Uh, bringing in another, um, just another idea that you think is great, a thought form, and then identifying with it is no different than, than what you were before. Uh, it, uh, if you, check out my video called uh, Going Beyond the Spiritual Ego, right? Because there is such a thing as having a spiritual ego, right? Thinking you're so spiritual and uh, better than others and so awakened, uh, then that's sort of not really going in the right direction. But with all that said, in the authentic... Oh, I cut out. Well, I don't know where I was. <laughs> But uh, regardless, uh, in the authentic um, approach towards astral projection, uh, uh, it should be a, a very grounding exercise. And th there is, you know, in a short answer uh, coming from my uh, experience and, and my approach, uh, no, there is no way you can lose your grounding. Uh, in fact, uh, it, you become more grounded. If you approach it very mindfully uh, and properly and not go into these uh, thought forms of, you know, having a spiritual ego, um, identifying with all these spiritual thoughts, uh, you know, I don't know if you heard me, but, you know, check out my video called Going Beyond the Spiritual Ego. And that, I go into it on there. Uh, yes. So there is also the uh, experience of you know, initially waking up uh, out of, you know, the the matrix, uh, so to speak, and uh, having having the the kind of unmotivation to to not carry on in this physical life. Uh, that's a challenge uh, in itself, and we do need to we do need to learn to live in uh, accordance and harmony with uh, the physical life. Because, as I said earlier, uh, the physical life and the material life and uh, the challenge of our soul to experience all this limitation is a spiritual challenge in itself. It holds uh, all the treasures of our consciousness in itself, uh, you know. And, and just like uh, Silas asked before, uh, you know, he was talking about all the bad relationships that he has with, you know, kind of past people and that we've all experienced as well. Uh, all 
all our challenges are in those things uh, and understanding ourselves and our reactions our and our own uh, psychological dream world that we can go beyond. <clears throat> I hope that helps. Uh, did you ever do DMT? No, I did not. But I mean, I, I, I do DMT, right? Uh, naturally. <laughs> because DMT is meant to be the uh, the chemical substance in, in the brain that is activated when we're dreaming. So sure, I do it all the time. <laughs> um, as for other uh, uh, substances, uh, yes, back in my university days, uh, around 10 years ago, I did experiment with uh, certain substances, uh, cannabis, uh, mushrooms, LSD. And um, I won't go too much into that, but, uh, you know, just to say, um, I what I experience now from daily meditation and astral projection experiences has, you know, whatever substances I've tried in the past have absolutely no comparison to to daily practice um they you know those things uh can just kind of give you a taste of getting out of your own sort of uh matrix so to speak uh but when we abuse it and when we become addicted to those things uh it is really just not a wise choice so yeah that's what i can say about that uh, you I find, find uh, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, no, I was yeah, about to say please. I find like those particular um, substances would be too difficult to be addicted to, <laughs> you know, with the experiences you have, of course. <laughs> yes, um, but there are people who do uh, abuse them still, though, and it's like you said, it's too difficult because you know it, they're so profound. Uh, but still, some people. Uh, they still do uh, abuse them, and you know, it. It's it's just if you abuse it, you're going into unconsciousness again. It's like, you know, our life is our unconscious life. Our mechanical life is like uh, sitting at the back of our sitting in the back of a, a car, and uh, life just happens to us rather than us taking control. And then if you take a drug. Uh, the, the car suddenly turns into a rocket ship and you're in the back of the rocket ship and you have no control and you're going through space. You have absolutely no idea what's going on, no understanding about what's going on. So yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, but with time, patience, uh, sobriety, right? Uh, soberness and, and clarity of mind, uh, we can build our own rocket ship and become the pilot and the astronauts and, uh, have full control over how far we go and where we go. Uh, have you? Ever um, yeah. Sorry. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> in terms of the balance of things, right? Say you successfully actual project quite often, right? Um, I can see that maybe some people would prefer to be in that state rather than deal with things in real life. Is there a sort of balance you should try to keep to? I mean, obviously you shouldn't neglect, you know, your daily life, right? Um, what's your sort of take on this in terms of the balance of things? Yeah, um, you know, I think, you know, and obviously I've experienced it as well. I think that people have a desire you know, what we experience is as, I, you know, I'd rather be in the astral rather than the physical. Uh, you know, who says that? And yeah. I th yeah, and I think it's our desire and our imagination of this uh, other world uh, that, that really is, is the issue rather than actually astral projecting. Because when you actually have the, the direct experience of astral projecting, um, it it becomes not this depressing thing, but a life affirming thing. And usually when you come back to uh, bed and, you know, this is, um, this is reported in so many out of body experiences that it is a life affirming thing. And you feel this new energy, you feel invigorated, uh, you have a new zest for life, this new understanding, and it, it becomes a joyful experience. You get up, you enjoy, uh, 
And so, yes, maybe, you know, maybe if, if I, I've not particularly uh, had uh, that issue that much, um, uh, maybe when I, more when I was lucid dreaming, I, I saw that. But when I started astral projecting, I started having a, having a more a zest for life and enjoying. I was like, oh, you know, this is amazing. I have more of a, a sort of um, motivation to, to meditate every day and uh, live more healthily uh, and do anything that can help uh, me uh, improve my chances of having astral projection again. So... Yeah, for me, it's um, life affirming and, and definitely improves my material uh, existence. You know, so I know for some people it can, it maybe isn't, doesn't uh, feel that way. But you know, this is all synonymous with what I've been talking about: going beyond our own negative uh, unconscious thought patterns and connecting with, uh, you know, living more aware of uh, who we are and what we're experiencing, whether it's the physical or the, uh, or the astral. So yeah, I hope that kind of, you know, helps or it answers the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, Silas, you ever fought in uh, battles in the astral realm or lucid dreams? Like, is there a massive scale wars of fighting? You think you could live in the astral realm like you're playing an RPG game? I apologize acting, asking childish question, but my curiosity leads me to knowing if I could hypothetically fight dragons or something crazy like that. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just reading you with a comment. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so... I mean, if you want to fight dragons and and play an RGP, uh, RPG game, um, just you know, just do lucid dreaming. <laughs> really, uh, the astral has limitations, just like the physical. And um, if it, it, you know, in a, if you're in a dream and you expect there to be a dragon that you want to slay uh, behind you, and you turn around in the dream, then there's there's most likely going to be a dragon there that you want to slay and you'll have a sword in your hand now if you do that in the astral and you turn around and, and intend there to be a, a, a dragon that you want to fight um then uh no it, it, the environment doesn't um it's objective it's independent it doesn't react and respond to your expectations and intentions in that way so yeah really just leave that all for lucid dreaming you know, as I said, astral projection is, is about a path of self-realization and uh, wasting your time doing these uh, these things is probably not the most productive thing. Um, yes. Uh, is there massive scale wars or fighting? Uh, on a more profound level, yes. Uh, you, you can't see it physically, but there is a war. And this war is kind of like a, is embedded in our dualistic perspective of, of good and bad. And in, in, in subtle, in specific subtle uh, perspectives of humanity, uh, there is always a war. And that's why so many of us are so, are so argumentative, uh, always wanting to fight with each other, always want, uh, imagining struggle, strangling each other. Uh, that's why there's been so many wars, uh, World War One and Two. Um, this is embedded in our consciousness. And our level of consciousness is in a, in a, in a dualistic, war-orientated mind. Uh, probably not for us, right? Because we're, we're quite spiritual. Yeah, but more so in in highly unconscious uh, people. So, um, and also, you know, have I uh, fought in battles in the astral? Um, I I have read that you know if you encounter negative entities, uh, you can fight them. Uh, you probably could, but it's better to just uh, you know you can imagine some light, or you can even pray for protection or something like that. Um, as I said. Fighting is a kind of uh, sort of animalistic um, and lower 
form of being uh, as as a as a kind of devolved human creature right we need to go beyond all this fighting and fighting and, and understand uh, higher higher perspectives of of consciousness <laughs> no no it's fine it's obviously it's a good question a, a lot of people you know a lot of people uh seek astral projection experiences for you know i hear um you know kind of like a reality shifting right where people say they want to go to harry potter world and stuff like that um people can do that you know I, i'm not saying that uh people should do this or that i'm not saying this is right or wrong i'm just giving my uh my take on things you know um yeah uh, you know as always everything i say is up to you to decide uh, i really you know i'm not i'm not seeking for people to agree or disagree with me uh, i'm not trying to argue convince or force uh, some sort of dogma or beliefs on anyone uh, you know quite the opposite and 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 i'm just giving my experience and approach if you want to you know do those things do it you know i've had uh, i've had uh, dreams of uh, uh, I think they're called game-induced lucid dreams. Um, one of my one of my favorite childhood video games is Halo, and I when I practiced lucid dreaming a lot, uh, I actually had experiences of being in the game, uh, shooting enemies, throwing grenades, and, and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to do that, you know it's great, and it's, it's good. Ex- it's all good experience. But I, you know, I just tend to talk about the more profound and, and deeper aspects uh, to to all of this, right? Uh, Lucian, as above, so below. Uh, what exactly does that mean in regards to polarity? Isn't polarity only there in the physical world and not existent in the higher planes? Uh, in one video, you said some entities with not so good intentions wear red or dark robes. So there's good and bad on the astral plane, yes. Uh, how does this go together with the overall love that holds the spiritual games realms together? So let me uh, find a diagram that might complement what I'm saying. Uh, there you go. I'll do this one. You might need to click it to see. Um, there are a lot of uh, diagrams like this, and as you can see, the fifth dimension there, uh, you can see the astral body. It's like towards the, the bottom left of the picture. So there's a lot of other stuff. I use this, um, I use this uh, picture in a, in a recent presentation. You can watch the presentation on my, my YouTube channel. But yes, what you will find is that in the astral, the astral is made up of the lower astral and the higher astral. And actually, uh, the, the astral is not actually higher than, than the physical plane uh in a way um and actually it, it can be more dense and more full of suffering than the physical plane uh, in a way but what i mean when i say uh, as above so below oh god okay what what you will find is uh i can't remember what i was saying um yes i think i remember what you will find is uh, the astral plane is, uh, there is the lower astral and the higher astral. And this is, this is reflective of that good and bad, that duality. And yes, what you will find is that, uh, the astral uh, and particularly the lower astral it is not really a higher plane. Um, it's reflective of the suffering and the unconsciousness of, of humanity. And so, uh, and above Above, I don't know, you know, the the specifics uh, of it as as concrete structures, but I do believe that there is in the astral plane there is like a lower astral and a higher astral, and then there is also kind of the the higher higher objective astral, and then you have the mental, the causal, uh, and stuff like that. So those higher dimensions are more towards this unified perspective uh, that you're you're kind of pointing towards, right? 
you said, how does this go together with the overall love that holds the spiritual realms together? Well, if you look towards uh, you know this diagram at the top, that would be where everything is together. Everything is one, everything is unity, everything, um, everything just makes sense and everything is above everything. And then as you go down in densities, uh, you start to see uh, the buddhic, you know, kind of the realms of Buddhism there, you see the causal, uh, you see the mental, which is, which is uh, you know, beyond this kind of duality as well. And then the astral, which, which, you know, the astral has suffering as well. Okay. So, you know, when I say as above, so below, I just mean that the, I'm pointing towards the reality that the astral, a lot of the astral is just a reflection of, of the physical or vice versa. The, the physical is, is a reflection of uh, the astral or it's a reflection of human consciousness, right? Uh, and to understand this human consciousness, it's beyond good and bad, beyond polarity. We have to go beyond the labels of good and bad and just understand uh, human consciousness for, for what it is and, and why we have these experiences uh, that we put ourselves in. So yes, there is this polarity on, on the astral plane too, you know, uh, you know, think about it, just, just good, you know, imagine you, uh, you suddenly die now. Imagine uh, a suicide bomber is a good example, right? Someone like that, uh, if they die, where do they go? Right? Are they going to go to a higher spiritual realm where everything is just fine and dandy? No, nothing changes when when the physical body dies. You know, I I suspect and um, uh, I believe, right? Uh, so nothing changes. Uh, just the physical body has passed away, and so therefore, uh, that soul will be in a an environment that is reflective of just where he was, where where that soul was, and he'll probably you know find himself in in the lower astral regions where uh, what we see is what we perceive as suffering and all that. Uh, Silas, you ever met God in the astral play, plane? Uh, yeah, I had a, a cup of tea with him. He told me about creation and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm just joking. But um, yes, like Jesus or the creator. Um, I don't even, yeah. I don't know what is considered God anymore. What I mean is in terms of a creator who ru rules over everything. Yes. Um, of course, we need, you know, God is a word. Uh it's a, it's a terribly mis overused word, and uh, everyone t uses the word God uh, as if they know what it is, when often we don't. Um, so, you know, it's just an idea. You know, a God is just a word. Uh, it points towards some sort of reality, right? Um, and I think, you know, for me, uh, God is something that you cannot describe, something that is immeasurable and untouchable. Uh, it is even, you know, kind of, it is consciousness, it is everything. Um, and so, sure, in that sense, uh, I have had profound experiences, uh, maybe, you know, in the higher, in, in mental planes or perhaps even beyond, where I have gone beyond kind of the perception of myself, gone beyond kind of this physical form and experienced uh, sort of fractal realities where everything just makes sense. Everything is one. Everything is 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 joyful. Everything is in, in relationship with each other. Everything is in harmony, um, you know? So in that sense, sure, I've maybe gone to uh, towards realities uh, which we call God. Um, as for archetypes such as Jesus or Buddha and also the Divine Mother. I've had um, experiences of them. Now, whether they are the actual, you know, Jesus or Buddha or something like that um, isn't in really important because uh, what's important is what I felt during those moments. And uh, for example, if when I met uh, depictions or archetypes or energies of the Divine Mother, I felt 
an all-encompassing uh, love that you know is is very hard to describe. It's similar to you know when 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 you're first in love with someone, right? So innocently, and you feel this warmth uh, in your heart, and everything feels fine. Um, and similarly, uh, experiences with with Buddha, um, you know, you have this mental feeling of of clarity and uh, impartialness, and then uh, there's also this powerful um, feeling of, of of Jesus, of Christ, uh, which is. Yeah, it's difficult to uh, describe, but you know, I saw the physical appearances of them. But what was more important is the the energies that I felt when I when I met them, and the impact that it had on my state of mind and being during that time, and also when I woke up as well. So, yeah, I've I've met uh, those three are the most uh, significant kind of figures that I've met in the most uh, describable way. Do you think that space is actually infinite? Um, you know, I, I feel my intellectual mind coming in and saying, no, oh, perhaps not, but I mean, compared to at least my where I am now, where we are now as, as, as people in this physical world and in our kind of uh, third and fourth and fifth dimensional types of consciousness uh you know it definitely feels infinite yes space is infinite and we have you know just as the micro the macrocosm is an is an infinite uh manifestation of just infinite realities which you can even see in in science um so too in our macro microcosm we we have that infinity within ourselves as well uh, i'm not sure i'm not sure if any of you have seen the the deep hubble space uh, image i'll upload it now has everyone seen that the 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 deep hubble space image has anyone not seen it this one anyone does anyone not understand this picture <laughs> yeah so, you know, for anyone who doesn't understand this picture, it's extremely, it, probably the most important and, and significant picture science has ever, ever taken, right? Uh, you can understand it as if you point your thumb in the sky and if you, if you uh, see your nail, your thumbnail, as a portion in the sky and then imagine uh, the telescope, the, the, the space telescope, that, that, that's the size of the portion in the sky that... Um, that it captured deep in space. And every single one of those dots on the screen is an entire, they're not stars, it's an entire galaxy. And for each galaxy is, uh, is predicted by science uh, around 250 to 500 million, or million or billion? I think it's million stars, Five, it's like 200 billion stars. Uh, million stars, right, for each galaxy. And science also said recently that for each gal uh, for each star, there is at least one orbiting planet, at least at the minimum. And so therefore, uh, think about how many planets exist within that, and then also multiply this, this tiny portion of space, that's the size of your thumb, by 360 degrees all around you. This is, is this not proof of infinity, right? So it really shows, at the same time, it shows you how insignificant we are, but at the same time, it also shows us how, how uh, infinite, infinitely deep uh, our, our potential is. And it's a reflection of that. You know, people with a materialistic mindset look at this picture and say, "There's no meaning. Uh, we 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 don't exist here. As um, we just we're just a a point in time and space. We're just a, an accident." Uh, but then, in a spiritual perspective, a person sees this and understands his own uh, potential, 
potentiality and his own uh, power that's within himself and the depth of information and knowledge that he can access within. Can you get sucked into a black hole in the astral realm? I don't know. I've never tried it. If you do, let me know. Do you think uh, that some souls are connected pre-life? Like oh, oh, yes, absolutely. I uh, kind of touched on that before. Um, karma uh, and our relationships with others and our energetic entanglement with others, right? As Silas said, you know, he kind of has some kind of uh, resentment or something like that towards other people, and we all have that, right? Um, and our connection with our parents and, and things like that. I, I definitely believe that uh, throughout our lives we we meet the same people. And sometimes, you know, what people call uh, um, soulmates are just are just people that you were you were you were partners with in in other lives. Um, yeah. And, and I believe, you know, a reason why we come back to physical life is because of the love that we have for our families as well, and that we want to help them, right? For example, uh, for example, um, you know, you could have a, a mother in this life, right? And, and when your when your mother dies in this life, um, she may miss you, right? And uh, she may want to help you. You may be really struggling and you may be even crying uh, in your sleep before you go to sleep. And she can see that and she feels really bad for you. And, and you're crying and saying, I really miss you, mother. I want you to be back with me. And so uh, out of pure love, um, she can come back as, as your daughter, right? Uh, and so uh, I, I believe uh, this is how, this is the cycle of a, uh, families and 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 things like that um and sort of our karma but also love and kind of uh, entanglements with other people uh that's how it can be right in one life your 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 uh husband can be your son or your son can be your husband uh vice versa <laughs> uh, quick question when you finish ap do you wake up tired or or like you actually slept. Uh, for me, uh, more than just actually slept, uh, because of the energy of, of astral projection, and you know, usually we are fragmented in our consciousness. And you know, have you ever uh, gone to a shop in a shopping aisle, and your attention is uh, is everywhere, right? Uh, your attention is looking at different items. Choose. Uh, choosing different things and when you I don't know you know I experience it anyway um when you go through these uh shopping aisles you start to feel like uh your attention is so dispersed you feel tired right and this is the this is the also this tiredness is also from the kind of fragmentation of our consciousness right all these different forms all these things, dramas anxieties of of life and of, of all you know the noise of our our existence um so when you are actual projects all this attention is being gathered and coming into just a, a clear clarity of mind and perception and vision and so that energy uh, invigorates us uh, in our consciousness and and i you know i personally feel a lot more energetic after after an astral projection so some people maybe say they uh, feel more tired because they, they, they don't feel like they slept. Uh, but honestly, remember, we actually project every night unconsciously anyway. So is it not better to bring our full waking awareness with all our senses intact and uh, experience astral projection rather than uh, doing it unconsciously and, and not knowing what's going on? Uh, usually we feel tired uh, not because we didn't get enough sleep, but because uh, we we may be we may have experienced some sort of negativity in our in our sort of astral or dream sleep because we're uh, negative in in physical life as well, n negatively thinking. So, if you were more conscious in the astral, uh, obviously, naturally, you wouldn't make you wouldn't 
go into negative experiences either. So yeah.